you may or may not know that recently I've been accepted to a university in Japan, which is Meiji University, and also accepted to their scholarship program. And ever since I posted about that, I've been getting a lot of questions and queries about how I applied, what were the procedures, what requirements were needed, how much I spent, and stuff like that. And so, I'm making this video to tell you guys the whole process of me applying to the university and the scholarship and my expenses and stuff. So if you want to go study in Japan in the future or you just want to know this information, keep on watching! So there are quite a lot of things that you have to consider first before applying to a university since uh, depending on your budget, you have to slim down the universities and the courses that you apply to since they charge a fee for admissions and for exams. Um, they are usually around 30,000 yen, which I think is around 8,000 to 9,000 pesos, so they can be quite pricey. So what I personally did is slim down my options depending on what university I wanted, um, where I wanted the university to be, what course I wanted, and the scholarship options. Also, take note that not all universities in Japan have a wide variety of courses offered in English. So if you don't have any Japanese history, you have to really do your research on the schools and what English courses they offer. Now let's say you chose one or two universities that you want to apply to. What you're gonna do now is go on their website, on the admission page, and browse the admission procedures. Usually they have a packet that you can download which states everything from uh, expenses, mailing addresses, and the complete list of procedures and deadlines that you have to follow. And from these requirements, you need to manage your time wisely. Um, I say this because there are some requirements that you still need to request from your previous school, which will take a few weeks at least. There are also some tests that you still need to take, like the SAT, ACT tests, and English proficiency tests. And also, when it comes to mailing your documents to the university, um, there will only be a one to two week period uh, in which they will accept your documents. So ship them early because you'll never know if there's going to be a delay in the mailing system. For the price of the ACT exam, um, I think I spent around 7,000 pesos for that, so it's not cheap. So what I did was review a few weeks ahead, you need to review your English, math, science, reading comprehension, and I believe there was an abstract test as well. There's an optional writing test, some universities require it, some don't, in my case I didn't take it, but if your university requires it, then take it. Okay, so putting all the physical documents aside, you now have to keep track of their website because they're gonna update the website from time to time um, to put following procedures and also you need to wait for the online application system since there are gonna be some forms that you have to fill up and also the payment for the application is gonna be made through there. So make sure you do that or your application will be terminated. You're gonna be asked to submit an ID picture that's like not older than three months so make sure you have your picture taken also you're gonna be asked to submit an essay around 700 to 1000 in word count so make sure you prepare for that as well make sure to copy read and review your essay make sure it's nice basically because those are one of the main things that they look at in your admission procedures Now let's say you have your documents all collected and ready for shipping. They're gonna give you a checklist of the things you have to send to them. I suggest uh, arranging your documents in the order that the checklist was written. So make sure it's all neat and tidy, put a paper clip on it, put it in a sealed envelope, and have it shipped. In my case, from Valenzuela City to Tokyo, it cost me 1,500 pesos to ship my document. Um, that's one for the university and one for the scholarship. Now that I finished discussing the admission procedures, I'm gonna go over to 
the scholarship procedures. So obviously the first step is to find a scholarship program that suits you and your needs. So if there's any advice that I can give about this, is that don't limit yourself to the scholarship list that's on the university website because trust me, there are so much more scholarships than that. Maximize your ability to use Google. Search up forums, blogs, government scholarships, third-party organizations. There are so much scholarships if you just know where to look. For high incentive scholarships, the most popular choices would be first off is the MEXT scholarship, which is provided by the government of Japan. It's basically a full ride scholarship where they pay for your tuition fee, they give you a monthly stipend, they pay for your air tickets, and also you get one year free Japanese language school. So that's a good one, but relatively hard to get. The second one would probably be the tuition reduction scholarships that your universities would offer. You can often find these promoted on your university's pages in the admission section. I believe in most cases, it is unsure and unstated whether what percentage of tuition reduction you would be getting. Um, I think it's highly based on the documents that you submit and the administration is going to decide how big your tuition reduction would be. So if you're in high school or in college wanting to apply as a transfer student, I suggest putting all that extra effort to make your grades high because that's going to be a big impact on your scholarship. As for the scholarship requirements, usually you'd have to submit a, a photocopy of the files that you submitted for application and also financial statements from your parents or from you if you're going to be self-supporting. You also have to submit a photocopy of passports, more ID pictures, then you're going to have to submit another essay. Please do not use the same essay that you submitted to your application. That's going to leave a bad impression if they ever find out that you use the same essay. Now let's talk about the interviews. Expect that you're going to have two different interviews, one for your admission and one for your scholarships. And it's better to expect that you're gonna receive different questions so that you can prepare more. So to help you out with this, I have the list of questions that I personally prepared for. So make sure to list them down or something. So the first one is, tell me about yourself. So this is generally taken as a basic question, but I believe they don't wanna know your name, your address, and your age, but rather what you have to contribute to the university or why they should give you a scholarship. So when answering this question, make sure you prepare a not so long and not so short answer that includes all the necessary information that will make them think, oh, so that's what they have to offer. Basically what you're doing is marketing yourself to the university, but do not fake yourself, do not fake your answers. Um, be genuine, but be your best genuine self. The second question is exclusively for the scholarship. It's, why do you deserve this scholarship? So basically, they want to know if you're a worthy investment because they're going to be spending money, they're going to be spending time on you, and they want to know if it's going to be worth it. Are you worth it? What can you do? What can you offer? I know there's going to be an urge to say it's because you're smart or you have good grades or you have good credentials, but what do you have to offer beyond that? Do you have feasible plans set for the future? Do you know how to plan? Do you know how to lead? And how do you plan on repaying the favor that they're going to give you? Now for the third question, it's what are your strengths and weaknesses? So first off, you start with your strengths. Go off. Tell them everything you have to offer humbly. So let them know what you can do, but also make sure to let them know that despite all that, you can still be a humble person and submit to authority. Now, the weakness part is a tricky one because yes, we all do have weaknesses, but I don't think anyone really wants to say what they're not good at. But you're still gonna have to be genuine. Tell them about something that you struggled with in the past, but also tell them how you handled it, how you faced it, and how you eventually overcame it. 
Through this, they're gonna see your perseverance and resiliency in certain situations. Because if there's one thing that they're looking for in asking your weaknesses, it's how you handle them. Because how you handled things in the past are probably how you're gonna handle things in the future. So for the last question that I prepared, it's why did you choose this university? So of course for the necessity, what I told you earlier about slimming down your options is gonna be handy when it comes to this question. Of course you're gonna tell them that the school has the course you want, has the program you want, and even has the English based course that you prefer. I expect that you looked through and about the school before you applied. So whatever key points you liked, whatever things that motivated you or pushed you into applying to the school, tell them about it. Mentioning things about school achievements or values that they may have can be like a plus point in your interview because they actually know that you're interested in the school and not just the benefit that you're about to get from the scholarship or something. Now for clothing choices. Obviously don't wear something like this but also don't go over the top and wear something overly formal. Just go for smart casual. And preferably a collared shirt with a base of a solid color. Maybe enhance your appearance a little bit, some light makeup, make sure to brush through your hair. Um, basically, look decent, smart, prepared, and confident. I know it can be a lot, but it can be achieved. And lastly, some people may forget this because of nervousness, but smile. During your interview, make sure to smile and just show them that you're happy to be there. Overall, the whole process of applying to Japanese universities or universities in general can be quite a risk because you're gonna be spending quite a heavy amount of money on admission fees, shipping fees, and even examination fees without being sure if you're gonna be accepted or not. Although we always want to remain positive that we can do it, it's also important to keep in mind that we must balance our perspective and remember that this is still a risk and a big leap of faith. But whether or not you get accepted, you will still learn a lot of things and earn a lot of lessons. So if you're planning to apply for a Japanese university in the near future, I hope that this video has been helpful to you somehow. And at the end of the day, after all that stress and hassle of applying, all we have left to do is pray about it. So if you have any more questions about this subject, please feel free to comment them down below and I'll try to give you a prompt response. That is all and thank you for watching!